Hi, Richard. How you doing? Hi, I heard it right after your dinner time, and in the UK, it's right after breakfast for me. So we both were well fed right now. <laughs> Good. You know, like oh, you know, when I started doing this research for these questions, and I'm and I'm about to interview a, a great actor like yourself, you know, I always go through this process, and and this process of looking at Loki was was interesting because I thought the idea of variance is like a very interesting concept, and I wonder, like, have you ever thought of different versions of yourself? I mean, as a as a black man, I always think of like how my life would be if I was white, but I never thought of like how it would be as a woman like uh, the, the the female or alligator. But have you ever thought of different versions of Richard E. e. Grant? Um, I don't really have a clue who I am because I've spent my life trying to be other people. So um, I am probably the least equipped person to answer that. But I suppose because I spent my whole career trying to imagine myself in the skin of somebody else, um, I've never thought about, I, 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 I don't know how to answer that. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's, it's the same for, for, for me. Like, I mean, besides just that social concept of just, you know, white and black and how the lifestyle would be, I've never really thought of variants, but I thought this low key thing with the variant was like very interesting. Um, so, I mean, I know you're from uh, uh, Swaziland, is that how, how it's pronounced? It's now called Eswatini. The king changed the, the name of the country six months ago. How how did you develop the dream to be a, a big actor from there? Like, was that something that was easily attainable? Not, I mean, I know it's never easily attainable for anybody worldwide, but was there resources? Or was there theater? Was there stuff like that that you could hone your skills to become this actor when you was growing up? Or how did that, like, how, how did that idea birth? In your, in your mind? They had, uh, there was one amateur theater club um, there. There was no TV, there was only radio. Um, and there was a one cinema where you could go and see a movie Monday to Wednesday, and then another one Thursday to Saturday, pre-video, PCD, you know, that's how old I am. Um, and when I was at school, I did, uh, you know, I did school plays and I had puppets and stuff that I made and my parents said, and everybody at school said, you can, never, you can never become a professional actor. It's impossible. So they said, you look too weird. And then I, I saw Don Sutherland in Kelly's Heroes in 1969 when I was 12 years old. And he had a long face. He came from the middle of a tiny town in Canada, I read in a fan magazine. I thought, well, if Donald Sutherland can become an actor, maybe I can become an actor. And people went, no, no, you, you haven't a chance. And you're in what was then called Swaziland, there's no precedent, there's nobody in the show business, there's no infrastructure, you know, there's nothing you can do here. But I think like anything, I don't know about your career, but if you have a fixed idea in your head, you think, well, I'm going to try because people have told me, no, 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 you can't for your whole life. What have I got to lose? So that's basically how I've managed to con my way into having a career. That's what it seems like to me. Well, I don't think it's a con. I think it, I think it's a very deserved career. Um, yeah. I, I wonder is, is has Marvel discovered a, a new form of storytelling? I know there's always been limited series, there's been movies, but yeah. when you have these eight-hour extended movies like the Loki or uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and stuff, is this like a new format in storytelling for? for the world. I mean, is this something that we've never seen before in, in, a, in a sense? Um, I think it's it's like the Loki variant. It's, you know, Charles Dickens in all his his novels came out in, in episodes. So, and, you know, ended up having, you know, some of the books, Oliver Twist is very short, but a book like Our Mutual Friend is, you know, it's like a doorstop, it's so thick. And, you know, when you read as a modern reader now, you look at that and you think, well, I need two years to read that book. But because they used to get it in weekly or two weekly installments, this thing of being told a story and having to wait for what, what's happening next seems to be have been around, you know, for a long, long, long time. So I think that that what you're describing is just a variation of our innate human need to be told stories and to be diverted by stories. So. I think it's it's just a variation. 
Why there's so many? Yeah. Because Loki survive. That's just what we do. All of us were arrested by the TVA and pruned, just like you. And just like you're doing right now, we all stood around making bad plans that went nowhere. Everything proceeded correctly my entire life until Thanos attacked our ship. You didn't try to stab him? Certainly not. The blades are worthless in the face of a Loki sorcery. I cast a projection of myself so real, even the mad Titan believed it. Got a bad cast. What do you think the appeal is? I mean, because I've heard people, I mean, it's been a lot of great series from from Marvel um, uh, so far in, in, the, in the universe on, on Disney+. Plus. But what do you think the unique appeal to, to Loki is? I mean, like people seem to really gravitate towards the story in a different way than they did all the other stories. And I mean, they've been great stories all around, but something about Loki is different. Like, what do you think it is that that's the element that people bite onto? Well, I think, you know, first of all, he's the god of mischief. And he's able to do things that, you know, in your normal life, you would love to be able to do. It's like you imagining yourself in a different ethnicity or um, because the gender of Loki is fluid as well. It means that anybody who's felt disenfranchised, an outsider, um, not see, not recognize, not included, um, especially at this moment in, in time that we're in at the moment, you know, 2021, where people have felt so disenfranchised and the uh, pandemic has isolated people so much. So it really chimed with me when um, classic Loki has this line, instead of talking about himself as the God of mischief, he talks himself as the God of outcasts. And I thought, I get that. I get that thing that you are, you are other or you're outside of what the norm is. And I think that the feeling that there's somebody that you can, who's rooting for you is on your side is, I don't know if it doesn't sound too fanciful. That to me seems to be the key that has, it draws people to him. I don't know whether that's true. He's also lonely, you know, and I've certainly suffered loneliness in my life. And I don't know whether you have, but just that feeling when you walk into a room or you wonder a group of people and you think, these are not my people, this is not my group, this is not my comfort zone or whatever. And I think that that's what that sort of deals with in some, in some way. What do you think? I, I mean, I think that's a great explanation. I think, I think people do identify with him as the outcast. And now okay. with people, um, you know, being able to choose their identity more freely, I think Loki is a, a great mascot for that whole that that whole uh, idea. And yeah. So, so yeah. So my, my don't last define me by my sexuality. Don't define me by my ethnicity, by my social grouping, whatever. Just take me for who I am. Yeah, I think the alligator just like put it over the cake. It's like, look, yeah. don't complain about anything. He he could be the alligator. So. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my last question to you is like with the success of Black Widow this weekend uh, worldwide and you go back to, to Fast 9, like how, how do you feel about like it feeling like we're getting back to the movies, we're getting back to the big screen, we're getting back to the audiences? Is that something that at the beginning of this pandemic you thought was going to happen or I mean, did you always believe we'll be back or were you like in doubt like most of us? I always believed it would come back because... You know, if you go back when they said in 1929, when sound came to the movies, it would end it. Yeah, it ended some people's careers because when they talked in the movies, they didn't sound like what they looked like. Then they said TV was going to end movies. It didn't. They said video was going to end CDs. All of this stuff was going to end. What is the common denominator is that our desire to have stories told and to have our world reflected back at us from a screen or through you know, oral or visual reading, that is a constant from since people were in caves and you know, drew things on the walls to represent themselves. So I think that I'm very optimistic. I don't think, I think it's, I think the more streaming possibilities we have, the more platforms, the more big screens, multiplexes, in whichever way you get it, um, I think that's, that's good news. I don't see it as a negative at all. Okay. <laughs> But I'm an optimist uh, by nature. I, I see. I see. That's that's great. It's a great uh, perspective to have. Well, I know you're classic Loki, but you're just, you're just classic 
Richard E. Grant to me, and I appreciate oh, the time and uh, thank you. and and take care and uh, be safe out there across the pond. And can't wait to see you guys in person once again pretty soon. Thank you. Where do you get your chairs? Because I've got one of them. Uh, I got them at some shop in Long Beach, California. Okay. Actually, they have like a yeah. <laughs> thank you. Good. Take care.